So I'd like to welcome you and thank you for attending our uh, Living the Promise Symposium this afternoon. The unique contributions that UC Riverside can make stems from our mission as a public land-grant research university. Inherent in that land-grant mission is commitment to uh, agriculture. And so it's really fitting that today's symposium is focused on genome harvest and the intersection of basic science and the impact of that on all of our lives. What do we mean by genomics to harvest? It's a label or descriptor we have to encompass research that we do on campus here, all the way from the very uh, most basic cell and molecular investigations of systems through the translation of findings and new knowledge from that base to application in agriculture and hopefully in improvement of productivity. I'd like to start on the issue of food security or food insecurity. We've been hearing this on campus quite a bit and, and as Phil pointed out, making sure that we have enough food for a growing population. So it asks each of you from, from your research perspective and your teaching perspective to address the food security or insecurity, really what the challenges and issues are and what you're doing in your research to address this. So my group works on food security from the perspective of decreasing the yield gap. So we work on abiotic stresses. So those are stresses from the environment, such as floods and droughts and salt and toxic components of the soil. And if we can just make plants a little bit more tolerant of these different stresses, we can help to close the yield gap. So my group um, is trying to address this certainly very important issue by uh, promoting the plant resistance to pathogens. Uh, the total yield, crop yield loss, about 20 to 40 percent, is due to pathogen disease, pathogen cause disease. So if we could uh, make the plants more resistant or tolerant to this disease, then we can certainly help solve this problem. One of the key things we're trying to do with our projects in, um, in sub-Saharan Africa is to build what we call human capacity there in terms of training young scientists. We train quite a lot of international graduate students here at UCR with the uh, idea then that they go back to their home countries and um, in our case work in, in legume breeding programs. I work on uh, looking at pre- and post-harvest factors and even here in a developed country like the United States, 25% of our food or more is lost to wastage after harvest and in developed countries this can be 60 to 70%. So a big chunk of what I do is trying to minimize those losses, first from direct loss of the product and secondly saving the, the flavor and the nut nutritional quality of the product after harvest. A big focus of, of what I really want to do is bring back diversity of product to the American consumer on avocados because now most consumers only eat half. There's hundreds of varieties of avocados and UCR through the breeding program has developed a lot of really great varieties. The UCR houses the largest collection of dates in the world. We have 118 different varieties. And some of these are the only palms left of certain heritage varieties that are in the Middle East. And the Middle East has been devastated by war, and so we have the palms that can only be propagated with tissue culture. So we're doing tissue culture, we're collaborating with a private group, and the goal is to be able to repopulate the Middle East with the, the heritage palms. In terms of our agriculture locally, we're working on drought-tolerant rootstocks for avocados because as our water gets saltier, we will not be able to grow avocados. They're very sensitive. So we're, we're looking for mechanisms and as well as uh, selections that will grow in salty water. Lastly, and this is more at home for our students and our, our community, we have a community garden and we have connection where we are growing food for the campus. We're growing food for the pantry, which serves uh, the students that are, are in need, and the staff, or anyone in need. And so along those lines, we're also, we've written several grants to train students to be our next generation of growers, and some of these are focused in urban action. 